There are insects in nature that love to make a lot of noise. Imagine you're at a rock concert where a singer loudly yells into a microphone and the guitarists give out deafening chords. And all this is transmitted through giant speakers. It feels like the music passes through your body. You will experience a similar sensation if you find yourself near a swarm of cicadas. These creatures create a clicking, ringing sound with the help of vibrating membranes on their stomachs. The awakening of cicadas is always a surprise for people. Any day you can wake up to a loud noise outside. Cicadas gather in huge swarms, fly out into the streets, and cover cars, trees, and buildings. They chatter for weeks, and then silence comes. Cicadas disappear as suddenly as they appear. The cicada's sounds can be pleasant or harmful to your ears depending on the species. It can be something melodic and captivating. When millions of cicadas click in the forest, it resembles the sound of a jet plane or a circular saw working. Some people can't stand it and run away from the singing swarm, but many also say that cicadas make a pleasant sound that envelops you from all sides, which is a pretty unusual feeling. They make this noise to attract breeding partners or to warn their families of danger. Perhaps they are just having fun. And the reason for such joy is their life cycle. Cicadas spend several years underground and then come out to make noise for the last several weeks of their lives. And what they do under the surface is one of the most exciting mysteries for scientists. So, cicadas are physically strong insects with big eyes and unique wings. We'll talk about their uniqueness later, but now let's figure out why these insects are so awesome. There are about 3,000 species of cicadas, but they are all divided into two groups, annual and periodic ones. Annual is a common type. You can meet them all over the world. They live from two to five years or longer and have a normal insect lifestyle. They fly, drink the sap of trees, and click. But periodic cicadas live only in North America, in the central and eastern regions of the USA. They can disappear as a species off the face of the earth and then, a few years later, appear in a forest and make such noise that you can hear it from afar. Imagine walking in the woods, picking mushrooms and berries, and then the soil begins to move and hundreds of thousands of cicadas are flying out. They are everywhere and they are very loud. But don't worry, they're not aggressive and won't bite you. The life cycle of these insects is divided into three parts, eggs, nymphs, and adults. At first, females lay several hundred eggs in different places. They leave their offspring near the ground on the branches of trees and brush. Then, after six to 10 weeks, little nymphs hatch out of them, fall to the floor, and burrow into the soil. There, they munch on fluids from the roots of plants and grow. They spend 13 or 17 years in these underground tunnels, then molt their shells and come out. And they all do it at the same time. It's as if someone gives them one order and they drop everything to come to the surface simultaneously. And after they rise, they start to click. Imagine spending more than 10 years in a cramped, dark space and then going out into a bright, open world where you will live for several weeks. No wonder cicadas are chirping so loudly. Or they may have a great time underground and then decide to spend their retirement outdoors. Most likely, their appearance coincides with convenient natural conditions. They wait for the soil temperature to become comfortable for reproduction and come out. However, while the soil heats up and gets colder annually, cicadas come out once every 13 or 17 years. Scientists can't give an exact explanation for this, but it may be related to other animals. Cicadas are pretty defenseless and nutritious creatures. A swarm of millions of cicadas is a feast for many forest inhabitants. Owls and foxes like to eat them. Suppose the forest ecosystem gets used to the annual singing of cicadas. In that case, their enemies will quickly destroy the entire population of these insects. Therefore, cicadas come out when no one expects them. Perhaps they choose the moment when the population growth of owls and foxes is at the lowest level. To avoid meeting them, 
Cicadas wait for several years. This version looks logical, but something doesn't work in it. If cicadas fight for survival in such a way, then why don't all species do it? Annual cicadas regularly appear in the forest and are an integral part of the ecosystem. They continue to exist despite the presence of many enemies. Why do periodic ones decide to hide? This is still unknown. A massive swarm of cicadas resembles locusts, so many consider them pests. But unlike these crop eaters, cicadas only feed on the sap of trees. They won't eat your corn, destroy your garden, and bite the leaves. Cicadas drink juice from branches and roots, and they do it quite rarely. Yes, a million cicadas can damage trees because of their relative weight, but the damage they cause to people is not comparable to what locusts do. Besides, cicadas will rarely bother you. You can finish university and change several jobs, and the cicadas would come out only once during this time, and they also look pretty cute for insects. Their wings have beautiful patterns, and their eyes are so huge. However, they can still terrify you, especially if you meet a swarm of cicadas on your way. Life underground seems safe, but even there, the cicadas have their antagonists. And the main one is a special kind of parasitic fungi that can penetrate the body of a cicada and slowly devour it. The fungus takes control of the body and turns the host into a living zombie. These parasites have also learned to change their life cycle following the life cycle of cicadas. That is, the fungus remains in the body of an insect for a long time and does nothing. And then, when the cicada comes to the surface, the parasite wakes up and begins to spoil its life. It feeds on the host's body and forces it to spread the fungus spores throughout the swarm to infect future generations. Another type of fungus doesn't wait for the cicadas to crawl to the surface. These parasites can cause infected insects to get out of the ground ahead of time, crawl up tree branches and scatter spores. Sometimes fungi grow out of cicadas while they are still underground. It seems that cicadas won't survive with such dangerous enemies, but nature has found a balance. Some types of fungi don't destroy their carriers. They live in symbiosis with cicadas. The parasite gets a home, and the cicada probably gets nutrients from the fungus. For scientists, this is a unique case when fungi abandon their parasitic lifestyle. With each emergence to the surface, the cicadas become bigger in size. This happens because large cities emit a lot of heat and nutrients into the air, warming the area by several degrees. This contributes to an increase in cicadas' size, but the growth only applies to those insects that live near cities. Cicadas hiding in rural areas with colder temperatures retain the same size. The uniqueness of cicadas is not only in their life development, but also in their anatomy. When insects become adults, their wings get covered with tiny nanopillars that can repel water, destroy bacteria, and self-clean. Doctors, chemists, and engineers want to use the properties of cicada wings to develop new technologies in different fields. A coating with the cicada's nanopillars can help people create new medicines. Engineers want to use self-cleaning surfaces of the wings without glare as coatings for solar panels and other high-tech developments. So, yeah, cicadas actually help us a lot. Get ready to witness the ultimate showdown in the world of insects as they battle it out in the Insect Combat Championship. Here, the arena becomes their octagon, and their instincts collide in a spectacular display of strength, agility, and strategy. We've brought together a diverse array of contenders from the insect world, showcasing their incredible abilities. From the lightning-fast strikes of the praying mantis to the calculated strategies of the honeybee, Let's see who this year's ultimate champion will be. Starting with our little buzzing friends, 
Honeybees, these incredible creatures work their tiny wings off, carrying around loads of nectar. More so, a worker bee can carry over half its own weight in nectar and still manage to stay up in the air. But that's not all these amazing bees do. They're like little architects too. They take charge of building their hives, putting together the intricate structure that we all know. Apart from their amazing strength, they also have a secret talent for construction. And let's not forget about their bravery. When it comes to protecting their home, sweet home, these tiny warriors take on the role of defenders. They don't back down in the face of predators. They stand their ground and ensure the safety of their fellow bees and their precious hive. Unfortunately, in this year's competition, the honeybees only managed to snatch sixth place. A round of applause, please. Moving on to the mighty cockroach. Not particularly a fan favorite. Either way, cockroaches do hit the jackpot when it comes to survival skills. For starters, they can survive for a whole week without their heads. Also, if they have access to water, they can go without food for up to a month. They can also be lightning fast. Cockroaches are some of the speediest crawling insects. This way, they can find shelter and escape from predators or shoe-wielding humans. Now, let's talk about their incredible senses. The cockroach species that are frequently found in America is equipped with a multitude of smell and taste receptors. This makes them experts at finding food sources nearby. Unlike other insects with limited diets, cockroaches are opportunistic eaters. They'll happily chow down on meat, cheese, cardboard, and books. Their versatile eating habits give them a better chance of survival when their preferred food options are scarce. Let's not forget about their strong exoskeletons. It gives them the ability to withstand compression forces up to 900 times their own body weight. Their exoskeletons consist of overlapping plates connected by a stretchy membrane, which allows them to flatten out and provides extreme strength. Even if something is dropped on them, their specially designed spines enable them to transfer traction to their legs, allowing them to escape the pressure unharmed. In our contest, they came in at a reasonable fifth place, so let's hear it for the highly resistant cockroaches. Have you ever heard about our next contestant, the rhinoceros beetle? It's quite a remarkable little creature. Who would have thought that a tiny insect could have more strength than an elephant? Well. Not in terms of absolute weight, of course, only when it comes to proportional strength. Elephants can only carry around a quarter of their own weight, while the rhino beetle can carry a mind-boggling 850 times its own weight. So, what makes these insects so incredibly strong? For starters, they are about an inch long and have incredibly strong muscles. But that's not all. These beetles are masters of balance. They always make sure to keep at least three legs on the ground at all times, which gives them an amazing sense of stability and leverage. This is what allows them to lift such heavy objects with ease. Living in tropical jungles and forests, rhino beetles need all that strength to navigate through the dense jungle floor. You see, they have to push aside branches and debris in search of their favorite food. That's how they got their name, by the way, because of the rhinoceros-like horn on their heads. It's not just for show. They actually use it to move obstacles out of their way. Now, don't be fooled by their fearsome appearance. Rhino beetles are anything but ferocious or dangerous. They have a pretty chill diet consisting of rotting fruit and sap. Despite their horned and intimidating look, they won't bite or sting. These gentle insects are harmless and definitely not looking to pick a fight. They also came in at number four on our list of strongest insects, so let's give them a round of applause too. Make room for our next contestants, the leaf cutter ants. They are pretty amazing creatures, known for their incredible strength, with jaws that could give any weightlifter a run for their money. There's this specific type of leaf cutter ant called Acromyrmex echinacea, and it turns out they have something really special in their exoskeleton. It's like a super tough armor made of this thing called biomineral. This armor is super strong and covers their whole body. No other insect has been found with this biomineral armor before. The only other creature that has it is a sea urchin and it's found in its powerful teeth. Experiments have shown that leafcutter ants with this armor tend to win when they're battling with other ants. Not only that, but this armor also does an awesome job of keeping fungus at bay. Leafcutter ant nests are no joke either. These things are like underground super cities. They've got thousands of chambers of all different sizes, all connected by tunnels. 
Should you ever find yourself strolling through the rainforest, you might be walking on top of a bustling metropolis of leafcutter ants. Now, some areas in a leafcutter ant nest are called fungus garden chambers. In a large enough colony, some of these are actually big enough for a full-grown human to stand inside. Leafcutter ants didn't win the competition, but they did make it to the podium. Congratulations on their third place win. Don't let our next fascinating contestant trick you. At first glance, the praying mantis may seem delicate and fragile. In reality, this insect has an intricate anatomy that is built for both strength and precision, making it truly unique among its six-legged buddies. Let's start with its head. Shaped like a triangle, it sports large compound eyes that can rotate a full 180 degrees. This nifty adaptation allows the mantis to effortlessly scan its surroundings for potential prey. More so, its elongated thorax, connecting the head to the abdomen, provides a stable base for its powerful forelegs. Speaking of those forelegs, they are the mantis' most iconic feature. They have sharp spines and a special joint that lets them fold and unfold in a flash. This adaptation not only gives the mantis its name, but also contributes to its incredible hunting skills. Picture a pair of spring-loaded sticks that can snatch unsuspecting prey faster than you can blink. The mantis also has a lightweight exoskeleton and a flexible body, which adds to its strength and agility. The praying mantis took second place in our competition, so congratulations are in order. Now that we've reached the top of the pyramid, the waiting is officially over. The grand prize for the world's strongest insect goes to the dung beetle. This little critter isn't just your ordinary insect. It's actually the strongest insect in the world. And believe it or not, it's the strongest animal on the entire planet. Proportionally, that is. One species can pull over a thousand times its own body weight. That's the equivalent of an average person effortlessly tugging along six double-decker buses filled with people. There are a few factors that contribute to their incredible strength. In addition to their hard exoskeleton, dung beetles have seriously strong leg muscles. Their legs are uniquely designed for digging and pushing heavy loads. They also have a low center of gravity. This helps them maintain their balance when they're carrying or rolling stuff that is much larger than their own tiny bodies. Dung beetles aren't just strong, they're also super speedy. These guys can zoom around at speeds of up to 0.67 miles per hour. That's quite impressive for such a small creature. So, you're at home, enjoying your evening tea under a warm blanket, when all of a sudden you see a huge, no, enormous mosquito. Its long and gangly legs have a span of your palm, and it clumsily bumps into all the obstacles it meets. Despite its awkward appearance, it's still terrifying. What if it carries malaria? What if it eats you alive in your sleep? Slowly, not to draw the monster's attention to yourself. You get out from your soft chair and run for it into the bathroom, lock yourself in there, and open the browser on your phone. After a few seconds, you draw a ragged breath of relief. Turns out, it's just a crane fly, not a mosquito at all. It might look like a ferocious beast, but it's actually peaceful and even defenseless. Many crane flies don't even have mouths, so they don't eat at all. And those that have a mouthpiece will only munch on sweet flower nectar. Crane flies are really clumsy in the air. Their rather short wings are no match for their huge bodies and long legs. So they're slow, and it's easy to catch them. Birds and frogs, as well as bats and cats, love them as a treat. The only way they can avoid being eaten is by losing a limb. Their legs easily break off, even when nothing touches them. And if you're still unconvinced not to scram and set your house on fire when you see one, consider this. Crane flies can tell you if the water pool you're about to swim in is of good quality. If you see these bugs on or above the water, you're good to go. Even more, fishers often make their bait look like the crane fly larva. Ah, this makes it more appetizing for the fish. But while googling, you get engrossed with reading up on some other weird and crazy bugs. For example, here's the human face stink bug. Nah, they don't really stink, at least for humans. They give off pheromones that attract other stink bugs, letting them know there's food nearby. 
The most peculiar feature of it is in the name. A man face stink bug has a face on his back with three black dots drawn in red. The vibrant color of its back warns predators that the bug isn't tasty or even poisonous, while the black eyes draw attention from them to the vulnerable head. Saddleback caterpillar's name is also quite telling. It looks like some creature from another planet with a bright green saddle over its back. And the saddle is, sadly, the only safe part of the thing to touch. The spines you see all over the rest of its body are sharp and highly poisonous. If you want to give it a friendly tap on the back, make sure you don't touch anything else. Well, well, we have a titan beetle next. Meet the largest beetle in the whole world. It can grow as long as your entire palm, complete with fingers. Seeing one in the wild can be a shocking experience, especially if it flies right in your face. But don't fret. Thankfully, this giant is placid and won't bite you if you don't mean it harm. Still, if you make it angry, never let its mandibles touch you. The bug will hiss and bite, and what such snap can crack a pencil in half? What's interesting, an adult titan beetle doesn't feed at all. It doesn't need food to survive. As a larva, it gets enough energy to keep it well-nourished even when grown up. Ooh, I love <laughs> that ability. An even more menacing-looking bug is a giant weeda. Living in New Zealand, these cricket-like creatures look like someone forgot to lock the portal to the inferno. A massive, beefy body with six thorny legs, long alien-looking antennae, and big mandibles that just might cut steel. Well, in fact, these giant insects are quite peaceful and won't bite unless provoked. And even if they do, it's not as bad as you might think. There are videos with Weedas biting hands of people holding them and doing no harm at all. So don't let it scare you, even though such an insect might weigh more than a full-fledged sparrow. Atlas moths look like they have three heads, two of which are serpents. These pretty nocturnal flyers have strange shapes on the tips of their wings that look like snakeheads. This seems to be their mode of defense from predators. And that's also why they're sometimes called cobra moths. In Southeast Asia and India, where they normally dwell, atlas moths are often found on butterfly farms producing silk. And that's some sight. The wingspan of one such moth can reach 10 inches. That's larger than your hand. Peacock spiders are perhaps the cutest arachnids in the world, second maybe only to their jumping cousins. They're so tiny, you probably wouldn't even notice one scrambling through your kitchen. But if you get a chance to take a closer look, do it. Peacock spiders are beautiful. They have large beady eyes, a shiny blue and red coat, and cute fuzz on their body and legs. And their mating dance is something else entirely. Too bad they only live in Australia. Another moth on the list, the hummingbird moth. Remember the atlas one, how huge it was? Well, this one's as big as a hummingbird and holds much more resemblance to its namesake than that. The speed at which it flutters its wings, the long tongue to drink flower nectar, and even the sound it makes when flying, all of it makes you wonder if it's really a moth after all. Of course, the fuzzy critter is absolutely safe, and you should consider yourself lucky if you ever see one. Longhorned orb weaver spider is one of the most unusual arachnids in the world. It's just your regular spider in all respects, but for some reason, it boasts two long curved horns on its back. The back itself is bright orange to ward off predators. Red means danger. But scientists are still unsure why this spider needs those prongs. So there's a web of mystery for you. The soft rustling of leaves underneath, a pile of them slightly moving, and a big mighty horn shows up. It's the Hercules beetle, one of the largest beetles on the planet. Almost half of its size comes from that horn on its head. Thanks to this wonderful appendage, you know exactly it's a male. Females don't have it at all. Yet the name comes not only from the horn, but from the amazing ability of this giant to haul extremely heavy loads. Its strength is second only to dung beetles. A Hercules can carry as much as 850 times its own weight. If you ever see a bug with five heads wearing a pointy cap, no, you're not on another planet. It's a Brazilian tree hopper. 
straight from a sci-fi movie and onto your screens here. This insect is a real mystery. It's small and secretive, and much is still unknown about it. No one knows why exactly the tree hoppers have these fuzzy balls on their heads. But they've only got one head after all. <laughs> that much is certain. Going for a swim in a freshwater pond somewhere in the African tropics. Watch your toes. You can get a giant water bug hunting them. It's a predatory bug and the largest of its kind. With those huge pincers, it's no wonder it's commonly known as an alligator flea and a toe biter. The bite of this water-dwelling monster is really quite powerful. It grabs its prey with the front legs and then slowly munches on it. And when I say it's a predator, I mean it. Giant water bugs' favorite food is fish and amphibians. Despite their name, scorpion flies aren't related to scorpions. They get this moniker thanks to their tails, which look a lot like the notorious arachnids. Seeing a flying scorpion is a daunting sight at best, but fear not, these critters are small and gentle, and they can't even bite you. Only the males have such a tail, and they use it to attract females. Hey! What do you imagine when you hear the words walking stick? Certainly not a bug, but that's exactly what it is. Look at this twig and try to guess. Is there something alive on it or not? Yes and no. This twig is not a twig at all. It is a walking stick. These insects have developed a fascinating camouflage. They're long and unassuming, able to stay still for hours on end, which makes them look like dry twigs. But as soon as you touch one, it scrambles away on its gangly legs. Thanks to their appearance, predatory birds often miss walking sticks in the dense foliage. And their Australian kin give off a pleasant scent, something like peanut butter. Ooh, yum! <laughs>